Thank you for watching. I'm uh, sticking to the 10 scale short course stuff for now. Last week you've seen me paint up this uh, uh, Proline Ford Raptor SVT shell. Uh, it's originally intended for a uh, slash or slash 4x4, but I dropped it on my blitz. Uh, so let's get that one out of the way because this one uh, so far it's done. Uh, it needs a new motor, new ESC, but uh, other than that, it's good to go for summer. This one, uh, that's even longer back. This was, uh, I believe, the end of September that I painted this one up. It's my uh, GTA 5 Blitz with a Flowtech body. This car, you might remember it. I painted this one up in, I believe, in March last year. I hated building it. This is an uh, Axial Exo uh, Terra. Uh, why did I hate building it? It didn't go together all too well. Uh, had some uh, fitment issues with the uh, amount of the diff housings to the chassis and whatnot. So originally this thing ended up on the shelf with, a, with an unpainted body. After I painted up the body uh, and after I trimmed up the body panels, uh, I fitted this. Uh, uh, this is a Proline uh, roof rack originally for a crawler, but I did some custom touches to it to make it a bit more fun. And I have to say, uh, my opinion on this car, it has completely changed. What a ton of fun. Uh, took it out uh, during summertime here around the house, uh, local areas, but also uh, on, the, on the tour that uh, me and my wife did uh, through Europe. And it has held up really well, uh, no problems whatsoever. It has a, a Castle Creatures 4 pole engine in it, uh, Mamba Monster Pro, uh, I believe that's what it's called, ESC. Uh, ran it on uh, 3S light bulbs all the time, no breakage, uh, nothing whatsoever, and it has done plenty of endos, plenty of crashes. And uh, well, the outside kind of shows that it has been uh, through a lot this summer. What I want to do since winter here uh, lasts so long. Uh, believe me, the days are super short. Uh, around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon it starts to really uh, dim down. Uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon it is completely dark. Uh, in the morning it's around 9.30 that it uh, starts to become a bit light. And this is the first winter out here, out here that I have not seen any snow. I live in uh, Norway. I'm originally from Holland, in case, uh, in case you wonder about that. With a weird accent. Hey, what does he talk about, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, that's why I come from Holland. And so there's not a whole lot of stuff to do outside here at the moment. It's too too much of a drizzle going on to go out with the crawler. Um, so I'm I'm just I'm gonna stay inside. I'm gonna do some more paint work. So I got this, and a friend of mine on a forum on Baja Addicts, he uh, directed me to a blog uh, from Axial itself. I didn't even know that the Axial had a blog and when I went to check it out I knew that he had no interest whatsoever in getting himself an uh, Axial Exoterra but he was so geared up and he said you need to go check this out I'm gonna get one. So I went over to the site and what the guys at Axial did is they fit this Baja Beetle shell which is originally intended for, let me have a peek here because I got the label right here. Uh, if you know my channel, you know I'm not about uh, unbaggings and uh, unboxings all that much. This shell is originally intended for the Slash and the Slash 4x4. But uh, Axial managed to do a few tweaks to the roll cage and uh, put a few additional bits of hardware on there. And they managed to make this fit on the Exoterra. I've seen the build. I will, I will show you guys a few pictures uh, in close-up that I will uh, swoosh by with my epic editing skills. Uh, which are not so epic at all, but uh, I will make it happen. I will, I will make sure you get a, a good close look at what uh, the guys at Axial did. And that's what I'm going to replicate over here. You don't always need to reinvent the wheel to come up with something really cool. Um, most of the stuff is already done before. So just uh, go check out the internet, see what you can find and uh, see if you can get some inspiration or uh, some, some cool ideas of stuff that's uh, already done before. First thing that I need to do is uh, take off all these uh, old body panels, the roof rack, uh, the light bar, the spoiler, uh, spare wheel carrier, these tiny panels in the back over here and uh, give all of this a really good cleaning because it is really dirty and I want the car to look like it's brand new when I'm done. Well, the entire thing is prepped. There's one, uh, no, there's not one. There's a few major differences compared to uh, the description that you will find on the uh, Axial blog. One of them is the front. Uh, Axial says you need to uh, uh, 
uh, buy a set of uh, tie rods and a few uh, of those plastic uh, rod ends to make the bumper angle out a tiny bit more. I did not do that. I, I, I purchased them, but I found out that I didn't need them. If you trim the front up a tiny bit differently, let me turn the car a tiny bit, you will also be going to a close-up so you can have a bit of a better look. If you trim this a tiny bit differently, a bit more aggressively, you will actually be able to make that uh, stock bumper setup fit. One of the main advantages, I think, of uh, having the stock bumper compared to the tie rod setup is that it will actually absorb some energy uh, since it is one of those uh, plastic hoop parts. Another thing that I did not do is uh, trim off these two uh, mounting points in front right behind the shock tower. Uh, Axial did that, uh, I'm not sure why. I think they, they needed a tiny bit of uh, extra clearance to drop the body down even further, but I want to be able to shift it back to the, to the original look if I, uh, if I choose to do so. So uh, in order to do that I need the original mounting point, so I, I left those two on. Uh, the main part that you will need is, let me get a card here, uh, this Traxxas part. I will also put a link uh, to this part in the description box. Uh, it's a battery hold down plate uh, with metal posts and the only thing that you will need is those two uh, metal posts. Those will, those will tap right into the screw holes that you find over here for the back of the bonnet. Another thing that Axial recommended is getting this light bar and that's where the main difference comes in. If you start doing this conversion, if you choose to do so, from a ready to run version you will find that you will have no interior, you don't have that uh, turnkey uh, fake engine sitting in the back, you won't have that Griffin radiator I think and in my case I started from a kit so I actually had all those parts and I actually had this complete light bar set up as well. Uh, I changed it out for a new one just because mine was a bit scuffed up but you don't need to purchase it. So, so far uh, we're, we're halfway along the car. So far the only thing you really need are those two uh, Traxxas posts. Uh, these two parts over here, uh, well, they, they kind of function as a body mount. But I'm pretty sure if you rummage around in your, uh, in your spare parts box that you will be able to find something that you can actually use instead of having to buy this massive parts tree, I can't find it this quick, but there's a, there's a lot of parts in there and the only thing you need is those two plastic posts, so get creative and just see what you can find. Uh, a big difference compared to what uh, Axial did to theirs is these two uh, rear shocks. I mounted my shocks on the outside of the cage, um, I shifted my uh, shocks, I changed them out for uh, Proline Power Stroke shocks and I found that on the inside without modifications there was no room for them and there you can drill out uh, the shock uh, caps a tiny bit to make a bit more room for an eyelet which I did not want to do so I mounted them on the outside of the cage and I think well of course everything is personal but I think it gives it a pretty cool look with those uh, rear shocks protruding as well as the fronts uh, then onto the back axial mounted two uh, light paws on the back of the of the body over here and I decided to go for the for the spoiler that you will get with the body. I trimmed it a tiny bit differently because usually it will sit uh, a tiny bit lower and I pulled it up front a tiny bit, uh, gave it a bit of a different cut but you can toy around with that. Uh, took out uh, the center section because I felt that there was no need for that and in addition to that I trimmed the rear out a tiny bit higher and a tiny bit narrower. Uh, in the axial build you will see that they took out this uh, rear window, they take off the rear LED uh, mount that you will find in the back of the cage and I wanted to keep that uh, rear LED mount, make it visible, so I cut, I cut it out a tiny bit higher and a tiny bit narrower. Gives it a bit more of an uh, aggressive feel I think. These two parts over here Mind you, the clear film on those is on the inside, so I need to peel that off and I need to countermask it. These two are just some cutoffs that I use, some leftovers. After I trimmed out the body, I cut out the wheel wells and I managed to angle up the, the stock parts that you will find over here. Managed to angle them up, uh, sort of replicate them, and it will give it a tiny bit more color once I'm, uh, once I'm starting to paint. 
Well, I think this video uh, is long enough as it is. So the next video, you will see me paint uh, this car up. I have a, a quite cool paint scheme, I think, uh, planned for it. So make sure to check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. New in this video, there's a discount code in the description box below. Uh, Proline has supplied me with a code, which is a Hemistorm 10. You will find it in the description box. If you fill Hemistorm 10, if you enter that uh, in, the, in the coupon or in the special code section, once you check out your, uh, your order uh, at the Proline Racing website, you will get 10% off. So that's really cool, makes the hobby a bit more affordable and uh, also make sure to, uh, to pass those codes on to uh, your friends and uh, yeah, you know, I, I hope that helps you out a tiny bit. It's, uh, RC is a really nice hobby but making it a bit more affordable is always a good thing, I think. If you want to be a bit ahead of uh, what I'm doing over here, since I have the slowest upload speed uh, on the planet, I think I use Dial-In to put videos on YouTube which is not uh, recommendable. Uh, so if you want to be a tiny bit ahead of what's uh, going on over here, make sure to check out my Facebook page. Also a link in the description box below. And uh, also if you uh, want to keep warm during winter and uh, if you want to get a sweater or a t-shirt. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.